Hello and welcome to the program. Someone asked me recently to show my logbook, so I thought I'd make a whole episode about astronomy logbooks. Why it's important to keep a logbook, how to keep a logbook, what should go into your logbook, and what do you do with it. So this is my logbook, and I actually have more than one. I keep another logbook in California where I live part of the year, but this is the one that I keep in Montana. And this is a log book that someone gave me that quickly filled up. And this is also a notebook that I use that I quickly filled up. And so that's why I switched to a binder. And this is a binder that contains my sketches. And then I have this sketch pad that I keep in the observatory. And then these are some blank pages that I put into the binder. And then this is a special project I gave myself for 2024 to see all of the objects in Cygnus, the Swan, my favorite constellation. They're listed in Sky and Telescope. And this is the list, and these are the double stars. I haven't put it in the logbook yet because I didn't look at the variable stars because it would have taken too long but I did observe everything in Cygnus the Swan, including the incredibly difficult footprint nebula and the egg ne nebula. So I guess I will put it in this log book. I just need to punch three holes in it. And for 2025, I've given myself another project, which is the Herschel 400. But why keep a log book? Actually, it's very important when you're starting out to keep a log book. You'll be glad you did. It's very fun to go back years later and see what you wrote when you were first starting out. But more importantly, it's critical to keep a log of your observations that you can refer to to see what you've already seen and what it looked like and what you didn't see and what you didn't see well and what you'd like to see better and what you'd like to see at all. But more important than that, Having a record to see what you have seen in the past and keeping the record itself will force you to look closely at the object and write down the details about the object. And even better is to make a sketch of it. That will really force you to see details on the objects you're looking at. And in having to study each object and write down those details, it'll make you a better observer and you'll see more details than you ever saw before. It takes more than a cursory glance to see things you might not otherwise see, like a central star or a dust lane in the galaxy, resolve individual stars in a star cluster, see a dark lane in a barred galaxy, things like that, that make observing really fun. And the last reason for keeping a logbook is that if you're participating in an observing program and you want to get a pen or a certificate, many of the observing programs require you to turn in your logbook. So how should you keep your logbook? The way that I keep my logbook is in chronological order just by the date that I was observing. But another way is to keep the logbook ordered by type of object. So one would be for galaxies and one would be for star clusters. I've never kept my logbook that way, but if you do, you'll want to have a master list somewhere so you can cross-reference it. For the physical book, you could either use a binder like this or a spiral notebook would work. And I like the binder because I like to print out pre-printed visual observing forms from the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, of which I am a member, or from the Astronomical League. And that way, I'll remember to include all the necessary information. Or you can buy a hardbound book, like I showed you. With the binder, you can take the pages out and you can copy them and you can make a PDF or send off a copy of the pages for your certificate. Plain white paper works as long as you include the needed information, or a pre-printed form, or you can make up your own form. So what goes into your logbook? It should include the following information, the date, the time, and put down the universal time, the time you started and the time you ended, the location, and whether there were other people there, and you must include the sky transparency and the CN. 
I always put down the SQM if I have my SQM meter with me, but I always also gauge the sky quality, usually by using the little dipper. And one thing I don't like about the Royal Astronomical Society's form is that I don't use this one to five scale for transparency. I use the scale recommended by the Astronomical League, which is on a one to seven scale. And then I check out some planets and some stars in the eyepiece and see if they're twinkling or if the stars are twinkling, which is very bad seeing. And I mark down the seeing on a one to five scale. That's what I use. You can also use limiting stellar magnitude, which is the faintest star you can see at the zenith. I never use that. It is too much trouble, but you could see if you can see any of the six magnitude stars around Polaris. I always also include the temperature, whether there's wind, snow on the ground, and importantly for me, the presence of animals. And also anything unusual, I might see like a meteor or a fireball or the stupid Starlink or ISS or anything like that, or an owl or coyotes and such. And now let me tell you what you should include regarding each object you observe. Put the object name and the designation and the type of object and the constellation it's found in and include the apparent magnitude and the apparent size. Write down the telescope you used and the eyepiece and magnification and any filters that you used. I know many people have told me that they cannot sketch and I'm not very good at it, but if you can at least include a rough sketch, it really helps improve your logbook and it helps you later on. And of course, sketching will dramatically improve your observational skills. And I always write down if I didn't see something and also jot down the time that you started that particular observation and the time it ended. And if something goes wrong, I always write that down too, like polar alignment didn't work and I had to redo it. Or it was so cold I had to go inside the house and I try to record my observations while I'm observing, but sometimes it's so cold <laughs> that the pen won't write, and then I try to fill it in later inside the house. I've never done this, but you could use a voice recorder and transcribe it later into the logbook. Now, for your objects, here are some things that you might consider recording about each object. For all the objects, note the shape of it. <laughs> what was the size of it in the field of view? And you can note if you had to use averted vision and say if the averted vision helped you to see more. And if so, what were the other details? And were there bright stars or bright objects or asterisms nearby? And note if you change eyepieces, which eyepiece worked the best to improve the view. For star clusters, you can note if there were greater concentrations in one part and how concentrated it is, if it's a globular cluster, and can you resolve individual stars all the way to the core, or does it just appear nebulous? And for a galaxy, you can note whether it has a bright core or whether the brightness is not uniform, and can you see any dust lanes in the arms, and can you see any stars inside the galaxy? For nebulae, are there darker and brighter areas, and are the edges well-defined, or is it vague, and are there any stars within the nebula? And do you see any colors? For planetary nebula, is it stellar or like a disk? And does it have any colors? And does it have a central star? And does it blink if you stare at it? For dark nebulae, can you see any stars? And are you able to discern the dark nebula from the background sky? And don't forget to at least try to make a rough sketch of what you saw. Now I've told you about printed logbooks, which is what I use, but you can use an electronic database. You can use Stellarium or Sky Safari or record observations in a paid program called Deep Sky Planner for Windows, and I'll give you the website for that. I've never used it, but it's received good reviews. And Stellarium, Sky Safari, and Deep Sky Planner all allow you to plan and create your observing list. So next time you go outside to enjoy the night sky, be sure to record your observations in a logbook and try to make a sketch. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.